In this video, we're going to see how to use GitHub projects with automation to effectively manage your projects that take place in GitHub. So first of all, I'm going to go to an existing GitHub repository that I have, My Plant Diary Queue. I'm going to go to Projects, and I'm going to click New Project. We can have multiple projects for one GitHub repository. I tend to think of projects like Epics in the Scrum framework because an Epic is kind of like a, a big thing that we want to do that might be composed of subcomponents. In our case, this project or this Epic is going to be consuming GPS data inside of our app, which you see has a lot of moving parts, but the good news is that also gives us a playlist that we can use to create stories or tasks essentially. So let's call this project Enable Location Services. Description, consume latitude and longitude for the user's current location. A template, let's choose automated Kanban with reviews and then we'll choose create project. Now we see it gives us a, a, some hints and some welcome here. I'll go ahead and just clean these guys up a little bit. Now we'll take a look at some of the tasks that we have. So we have our build duck gradle update, Android manifest, uh, view model, location request, several things that we can do here. So we'll click on the plus and we'll say update build duck gradle with libraries and we'll choose add. Now once I've added that, I can come here to this ellipsis and I can choose convert to issue. And we'll say update the build duck gradle with the location services libraries, then rebuild projects, and choose convert to issue. Now I'm going to click, and we see that we can get into some issue details here. So first of all, no assignees. I can go ahead and assign myself if I want, or I can assign someone else. As soon as I assign myself, you see my little icon appears over here. Labels, so what is this? What kind of task is this? Well, this one we're going to call an enhancement or a new feature request. You see, we have other tags for bug, documentation, duplicate, uh, so on and so forth, but we'll go ahead and stick with enhancement. So you see, when I choose that label enhancement, you notice that this little icon appears here and describes what this issue is. Milestone. Now, I said that a project is kind of like an epic if you're thinking in Scrum language. Milestone, I would think to be like a story. So you note that we don't have any milestones yet, so we can create one. So we'll say enable GPS consumption through MVVM. And this essentially creates a brand new milestone. So once again, you see that the milestone appears here. Now, if I click and I go, uh, I can click into this milestone and you see that I get a more detailed view of this milestone and I can see any issue that is associated with this milestone. This actually appears under the issues tab in GitHub. Let's go on back to our project and enable location services. And what I'm going to do now is pause the video for a moment because we have quite a few things here that we need to task out and I'll just pause the video to save some time, make these tasks. There's also a list of tasks over here. Now, in this example, I'm using an Android project, but really this example is not about Android, it's more about GitHub. So if even if you don't use Android, if you use maybe Eclipse or IntelliJ or something else, you're doing a microservices project, a lot of these steps will still be the same. At the moment, I've created three more tasks. And what I wanna show you is that once I've defined a milestone once, I can simply select it and add it to any existing task. And then I can take a look at the milestone view itself and I can see any of these tasks that I've assigned to this milestone. I can also go in and edit the milestone and give it something like a due date if I wish and a description. But nonetheless, we see that the milestone once created can tie several of our different tasks together. I've added a few more tasks now, including one that is listen for location request and on active. Now that goes with our existing milestone of enable GPS consumption through MVVM. It can also apply to another milestone, which is show the user the updated GPS location data, something like that. Let's choose create and assign to new milestone. Now you'll notice it can only be assigned to one milestone at a time because as I toggle between these two, you can notice on the left that the milestone updates but it won't let me choose both. It will only let me choose one at a time. 
Uh, for this one, we're going to say that the UI is a bit more appropriate, so let's go ahead and choose that milestone. I'll continue to create a few more issues. Now, what's the value of a milestone? Well, at this point, you'll see that I've added about 8 to 10 issues in three different milestones. I could drag this one over to in progress and say that I start working on that, and I could manually update some of these. Maybe this one starts in progress, and then this one goes to review in progress. Now, what's neat is that you notice that the... We, our, our meter of doneness automatically updates here, which is quite nice. Let's look at one other thing. I'm going to go to Issues, and I'm going to go to our Milestones, and let's say Show User Updated GPS Data. Edit Milestone. Let's say that we've done all of our tasks for this. We'll go ahead and put in a date just for S and G's, uh, just like so. Let's say, okay, completed this task and all reviews. Uh, so now I can say close milestone. Go back to milestones view, see the one that's closed. Notice that our three tasks are open, but not a problem. What we can do is we can just do a little select all here, and then we can say mark is closed. Now let's go back to our location services board, and you notice that it has automatically moved all of those items that were associated with that milestone over to the done column. But our initial milestone, the enable GPS consumption through MVVM, all of the tasks there are still open. So milestones are one way to automate this, but you notice that when I did that milestone, it kind of skipped over all of those other steps and it also assumed that we're going to update those manually. Let's take a look at another approach that we can do. When I click into any of these tasks, we see that we have our milestone. We also have a linked pull request. And there are several pull requests that we have here. There's take photo, merge, consume, plant, JSON, layout. Uh, several, but none that apply to us. And what's important about pull requests is they can also be used to automate this journey of issues from one column to the next column to the next column, so on and so forth. Well, as luck would have it, uh, I'm recording this video after I've actually done all of these tasks. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pull them into in progress because this is what we're going to work on in our current module. I'm going to run back to our repository. And I'm going to take a look at my branches and I have a branch for GPS, which is where I did all this work. We can go through here. We can see I've done a few commits about live data and essentially all the tasks that we're talking about right here. I did not pull this one yet, and now's a great time to do a pull request. So let me go ahead and choose new pull request. And we are going to uh, compare master and consume GPS. And looks pretty good so far. Able to merge, which is always helpful, and all the changes that I put in there. Let's go ahead and choose create pull request. And the pull request is you've used live data to obtain GPS location in our app. So we have completed the tasks to meet the requirements. Now, a pull request, remember, it doesn't actually, it's not the same as a merge. It means we can merge. It's a prerequisite step to merging, but it's not actually a merge. Um, I'll tell you what, though, while we're here, let me go ahead and add a couple of our milestones. Let's go ahead and enable GPS consumption. Let's add that uh, project. Enable location service. We'll add that as well. Um, labels, we can call it enhancements. We see a lot of very similar things that we saw in our project view. For reviewers, I want to choose myself as a reviewer, but that would be kind of funny uh, because I'm the one who wrote this stuff too. This project only has one contributor and that's me. So nothing appears there, but if you're using, if you have multiple people on your project, you'll likely see some reviewers there. Let's go ahead and choose create pull request. So we see that uh, all checks have passed. That looks good. And that's likely our Circle CI build, which is great. We see that we're able to do the merge, but let's run back to our projects first. And here we're going to add that pull request to our tasks that are open. I refresh the page, and when I go to link pull request, you'll see there are several that already have been merged. But now here's this one that we just created that's not yet been merged. So I go ahead and link that. Once again here, you see link pull request, and I'll do that for each of these other issues. I'll go ahead and pause the video. I finished linking each one of these tasks or issues, if you will, and you'll notice that each one has one linked pull request underneath it. Now at the bottom, you notice the pull request itself is an issue. And actually, when we click on that, 
we can see all of the issues that are linked to it. Similarly, if I go to the pull request itself and I take a look, I can see in the history, it shows me all of the issues from my project board that have been linked to this pull request. And I can see them over here as well. So you see, the pull request is now telling us a lot of information. It's an enhancement. We can see the progress of it. We can see the milestone or milestones associated with it. And we can see all of the tasks that are associated with it. Let's go ahead and merge this pull request. Let's go ahead and confirm merge. And we see now pull request is successfully merged and closed. But now here's the cool part. I just jumped back to our project board. I haven't hit refresh or anything, but take a look. Nothing in progress, and you see that everything has moved over to the done column. Now, because this is just a project of one, I wasn't able to add a reviewer, but what you'll see if you click on the ellipsis is each one of these columns has its own automation rules for how the column works. So if I click over here, we can choose Manage Automation for In Progress. And you see when an issue has been opened or a pull request is newly added, it's going to land here. Let's compare that to the others. If we go to Review In Progress, we'll see that things come over here automatically when it's pending approval by reviewers. So once we've requested a review, it will appear over there. Now let's go to Reviewer Approved and Manage Automation. And you see here, once a reviewer approves an item, it will automatically go to the approval column. Now let's go to Done, and this is the one we kind of short-circuited just a little bit here. But if we take a look at this, Move Issues here when they're closed. So you remember we closed a whole bunch of issues with, at once with a milestone. Or we can close them individually by navigating to the issue itself. Or we can do it the way we did it just a few moments ago, where we associate all of the issues with a pull request. And then once that pull request is merged or closed with unmerged commits, automatically all of those issues that were associated with the pull request will appear in this done column. So GitHub Projects gives us a lot of functionality that we get with other Kanban-based or Scrum-based tools. But the nice thing about GitHub Projects is that we can create some automation and we can automatically integrate it with our project and with our workflows so that a pull request is not just, hey, I'm all finished with this branch, let me pull it in. But a pull request takes away the manual work of us having to update our board. When I start the learning module, I usually go through the board at, at once and I use that once to go through an entire learning module. What I really should do is I should be moving the cards as I'm working them. But I like this because what I can do is I can create all of my tasks in the beginning, then I can work through the lecture material, and I typically, at the last lecture, I'll go ahead and do a pull request. So with having this automatically linked up, you know when I do that pull request that all the cards are automatically moving to the right, and you don't have to watch me manually do that anymore. So going forward, that's what we'll do. I hope this video has been helpful. I look forward to reading your comments and hearing other ways you might have used GitHub projects to automate your projects. Thank you.